It is Monday, May 17th. The Pittsburgh Penguins are 0 and 1 in their first playoff game. And you're watching H and J Talk Sports. May we take a moment to collect ourselves. It's Monday. I'm Joe. This is Harry. This is HJ Talk Sports, the number one podcast for Penguins, Steelers, West Virginia. And that's pretty much it, except other times when we talk about other things. Harry, what's going on, man? Hey, what's up? So I told you we should have played the Bruins first. They lost. They still would have lost. <laughs> they lost our it's first It's a very game. somber Monday. A um, lot to get into today. We're going to talk about that Penguin Islander game. Uh, we're going to break down the whole bracket. If you follow us on social media, HJ Talk Sports, you saw our playoff brackets we posted this week. We're going to go through those matchups. I'm going to tell you some of the picks I already regret making, which is not the Penguins. Uh, and then we're going to look at the Steelers schedule that was released this week. And we're going to go through each game and tell you if we think win or loss. And we got to recap UFC 262, which was lackluster. Got a fun show. Yeah, fun show, fun show. Let's get right into it. Uh, Penguins are 0 1 in the playoffs. Um, um, it was disappointing to say the least. Do you remember? I think last week we talked about it. What I said, the one thing I was concerned about headed into the playoffs, Harry. We'll what see how that? much you pay attention. <laughs> the one thing you were concerned about. No, I don't remember. You don't remember? <laughs> this is what I deal with everybody. Week to week. The one thing I said that concerned me going into the playoffs was goaltending. Goaltending lost us Sunday's game. Jari was bad. Now. The Penguins didn't look bad overall. I'll say Crosby, Rust, Latang, and Goudreau. A plus. They played good the whole game. They came out flying. They were magnificent. Everyone else, I would give a B, C plus. No one was stellar other than Crosby and the other people I named. Jari was a D. Goaltending was bad. Uh all four of those goals he should have stopped. Um, a few players looked disappointing. Now, the defense wasn't horrible. They could have been better. Pedersen looked shaky. Matheson didn't look like he had his feet under him. He's coming off injury. Uh, Marino looked okay. Cece looked pretty good. Latang and Dumoulin were pretty good. They were top-notch. Jari looked bad. You can't let in those four goals. I mean, you're not going to win the series like that. Yeah. I think they uh, – Islanders out hit them. But, but I'm, I'm going to chalk it up to Rust. I think they'll be fine. I think they had, they had a little break. Uh, they did have a break. At the they end of the season. Mm-hmm. One of the longer longer times between the last yeah. game and the playoffs. Um, I'm going to just chalk it up to that. I'd still, I'm still saying five. Six seems more likely, but I still say five. I'll still say five, too. Now, normally, I would say one loss. I'm not concerned. Good night, Manny. (laughs) Normally, I would say one loss. I'm not concerned. But in 2019, Penguins got swept by the Islanders. Last year in the first round, in the first round, last year in the first round, they went into the playoffs as the better team. They played the lowest seeded Habs in the weird bubble Corona thing they did. The Habs shouldn't even wouldn't even have made the regular playoffs. They got in because because of Corona they extended it. They lost to the the Montreal. They shouldn't have. So we're starting to see a pattern here. Now listen, our goaltending is not good, but the Islanders' main goaltender, who is good, was injured. We were playing their backup rookie goaltender. And he was better than ours. That can't happen. We're missing Malkin. He was hurt. But they're missing their captain, Anders Lee, arguably their second best player, out for the season. Uh, Barzell, probably their best player, has been scratched going into the playoffs. They have not been good going. You can't lose this series is what I'm saying, Harry. 
You cannot lose this series to the Islanders. I don't know what's going to happen for the rest of the playoffs, but you cannot lose this series. See, I, I'm not, I'm not panicking yet. I'm saying if they lose game two or three, then I'll start wearing. I'm not panicking, but here's why this is bad too. The Penguins had the best home record in the NHL. They did. Was- you needed to win this first home game. You just wasted okay. one home game. It's okay. Maybe it's better now. It wakes them up. I hope sometimes so. that happens. It's got to wake Jari sometimes, up. Mm-hmm. Sometimes teams need a wake up call. I mean, hopefully we can chalk this up to, uh, I don't know how many, but I think he did play the playoffs last year, probably his first season. I can't remember. I think they said this was his second playoff preview or something. So let's chalk it up to nerves, hopefully. Because overall, the Penguins didn't play bad. They scored four goals on one of the, the second best defensive team in the NHL. They look good for the most part, they dominated. Uh, so this is one of those rare games, I would say, you can almost blame the loss on goaltending alone, which doesn't happen quite often. Usually you get some bad goaltending, you say, ah, defense was bad too. You know, it's pretty much just goaltending. Yeah. But you have I'm- to mask that. Like I said, they had their rookie backup goaltender. So if you know you may not have the strongest goaltender, you have to do things to insulate him. And they weren't horrible, but when they get stuck in their own zone, it's trouble sometimes. Well, they were definitely hungrier. I mean, yeah. And you got to be, when you're, when you're the underdog, you're playing on the road, starting to play off. That too. I hate, I, almost everyone picked the Penguins. I hate it when that happens. And I almost feel like, ugh. They, <laughs> they came out with, them. you know, they're trying to set the tone, let them know. Yeah, it's not going to be an easy series, and Pittsburgh probably took it for granted. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they had just locked up the one seed. They avoided Boston. They avoided the Caps. I'm sure, like you said, the layover didn't help. Uh, layover, most other probably. teams have been playing all week. Pittsburgh got a week off, um, which t- takes away momentum. You could tell some guys were slower. Crosby came out. Latang came out really good. Russ looked good. Goudreau looked good. Everyone else, to me, looked kind of average. Um, even Kapanen. Right. He had that great goal 30 seconds after Islanders took the lead in the third to send the game to overtime. But the rest of the game, he didn't look very good. I didn't notice him. Uh, He had some turnovers, some lazy back checks. With the goaltending, everyone's got to be good or you're not going to. Teddy Bluger hasn't looked himself since coming back from injury. So it's time to wake up. Concerned? Not quite yet. Uh, but I'm they having flashbacks they to lose game two, it, it's going to be a different, a different yeah. story. You have to win game two. Otherwise, you're going to be in for a fight. If you lose game two, I'm pressing the panic button. <laughs> and I'm probably jumping out. I'm with you there. <laughs> Especially game two at home when you have the best home record. You have to, you have to home win. Games. You have to win game two. Otherwise, it's going to take a huge effort to get out of that hole. Yeah. You don't want to get out of the hole. You don't That's ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's Penguins. Uh, we have another game tomorrow night, I think. Yeah, Tuesday night. Uh, they got to bring it. We got to see a win. Like I said, we got to go one and one. Uh, I'm not not cause for concern yet, but you know, I don't know. Goaltending, I was nervous going into the playoffs, and that's what lost us the game. So, I don't like to see that. Uh, let's go over the rest of our bracket again. If you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, HJ Talk Sports on both platforms, we posted our full NHL bracket this week. Uh, outside of the Penguins, this is probably the most excited I've been for the playoffs in a while because some of these matchups are really exciting. Uh, you got the Florida series. Uh, Tampa versus Florida, which that should be a really good series. They don't seem to like each other. You got the two Florida teams. Uh, you got Toronto and Montreal. So the Battle of Canada, they haven't played each other since like 1979 or something like that. That's going to be a huge series. You got Boston and Washington, which if you watch game one, it's 1998 hockey. They're just just killing each other. It's like old style 1998 Red Wings versus Colorado Avalanche. It's a bloodbath. And it's good for the Penguins if they can get past the Islanders because they're beating the crap out of each other. Uh, But let's go over these real quick. 
So Boston Washington series. I had Boston in six games. Harry, you had I think you picked Boston too, right? Yeah. You had Boston in seven games. Washington won the first game. <laughs> so we're upset there. Uh, but that could have gone either way. It was it, I, I was actually surprised uh, Washington looked so good in that game, honestly. They've had a lot of injuries, a lot of stuff going on with them. Uh, they look pretty good, though. But we both think Boston. Uh, Carolina, Nashville. I have Carolina in four. Clean sweep. You have Carolina in six. Uh, I would be surprised if that one's six. But we'll see. Did you have reasons for six other than uh, let me click a number? No, I just, you never know. It's the playoffs. You did never know. I mean, I will say I went with most of the favorites, I think. I'm sure we'll see an upset somewhere in the first round. We always do. Next series, Florida and Tampa. Now, this is the one I regret my pick. On the show last week, I went with Tampa. Because I said they're the defending champs. They have the experience. Florida reminds me a lot of Carolina. They're young. They're hot. But playoffs are a different beast. Uh, I went ahead and picked Florida when I made my bracket. Because Tampa... Kucherov, their best player, who just came back, hasn't played all season because of an injury. So he just started. Uh, Stamkos has been injured. Uh, They've been struggling a little bit lately. So I went with Florida. But the more I think about it, I feel like Tampa still has the experience, and I probably should pick Tampa in that series. Florida in six. I have Florida in six. And so do you. So we both picked Florida. That's one pick I'm regretting. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, On the other side, Toronto and Montreal. I have Toronto in five. Uh, I just don't think the Habs are very good this year. This is Toronto's year to get out of the first round. Harry copied my pick on that one. Uh, (laughs) Edmonton and Winnipeg. I have Edmonton in seven for some reason. Um. Harry picked Edmonton in six to switch it up just a little bit. <laughs> Listen, Edmonton's got the best player in the league, Connor McDavid. He scored 100 points in 50 games. He's easily the best player in the league. It's stupid how good he is, really. Uh, but Edmonton's problem now is what it's been every year. They're top heavy outside of Edmonton and Dreisaitl. Like you just don't know, and their goaltending's weak. So I feel like this is the year they're going to win around. Uh, I picked seven games. Harry went six. They could sweep Winnipeg. I don't, Winnipeg hasn't been good lately, but you just never know with Edmonton. Uh, if you can cut, shut Connor down, I mean, it's very possible they don't have the depth to do anything. So we'll see. Uh, Colorado and St. Louis. I picked Colorado in four. Clean sweep. Colorado is just too good this year. Uh, Harry picked Colorado in six forget who it was one of st louis players made a statement the other day that we will beat the avalanche so we'll see and lastly vegas in minnesota i picked vegas in five uh harry picked five harry copied me on that one too again like avalanche vegas is just too good but vegas lost their first game (laughs) so uh, all right you know it's first game None of my picks went with me the first game so far. Uh, we'll see how. Series for a reason. Again, it's Monday. We record this on Sunday, so I haven't seen the Florida-Tampa game yet. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, it actually started. It's, it's on right now. So we'll see how that goes. So far, not a good start to game ones, but I, I still agree with all these picks, except for maybe Florida-Tampa, I regret. Um. And second round real quickly. So we have Pittsburgh, Boston. I had Pittsburgh going uh, against Carolina, who's going to beat Florida. And then I picked Pittsburgh to go all the way for some reason. Pittsburgh could easily lose that Boston series. They could lose to Carolina. And if they do get to the finals, I mean, you're going to play Vegas or Colorado. Probably. I don't see any other team coming out of that sign. 
And both those teams are going to be really – I have my finals, Vegas and Pittsburgh, which I think you picked too. No. Coincidentally. <laughs> I don't know. That's going to be tough year for Pittsburgh, especially with the goaltending. Uh, we'll see what happens as the playoffs continue. We just got to get out of this first round. So, yeah, let us know what your guys' picks are. Uh, I put a poll – all this week on Instagram, a lot of you participated. How many games? Most of you picked five or six games. Pittsburgh to win over the Isles. Had a few sweeps. You're wrong <laughs> already. Uh, but we'll see. I'm sticking with five. So, yep. It could be a very different show next week. Could be. I might, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I might not be here next week. Worst case scenario, we're swept. We're already out. Woo! Wouldn't that be something? Swept by the Isles. I mean, they got swept in 2019 when no one thought the Isles should win. That's what makes me nervous. You see that? You see the loss? If they lose this year in the first round, uh, Mike Sullivan might go. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people th- thought he redeemed himself this season. Uh, a lot of people early in the first week were talking he would be the first coach to get fired. Pittsburgh came back, won the division. He vindicated himself. People think he should win the coach of the year. But if they lose for the third year in a row in the first round to a team they shouldn't lose to, you got to wonder. Because this team's too good to lose. They're better on paper. I don't know. I agree. There's definitely something wrong if they lose again. Yeah. And coaching change wouldn't be out of the question. Or if not, coaching change he definitely would be in the hot seat. Yeah. You'd think. Let's see. Um, all right. I think that'll do it for Pittsburgh this week. Uh, hopefully we survive next week. Uh, keep track on Twitter and Instagram and talk to us all week about that. Football. We had a Steelers schedule release this week. We now know who we play, what week and where. I don't know if you feel any different after seeing the schedule, Harry. But he says no. He says no. Let's go through the schedule. Line by line, we'll skip the preseason because who gives a shit? Agreed. Now, I will say on mine, there's two games. There's four games on the schedule I'm I'm, uh, 50-50 on. But we'll get to those. Let's start week one. Uh, Pittsburgh. At the, the Bills. So I'll let you lead these off. What do you think? Uh, loss. Loss? Buffalo's See, this good. one I'm 50 50 on. I think it's a loss, but I don't want to I don't want to be negative the first game of the season. <laughs> I don't want to be negative, but you gotta give some time to figure things out. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, I definitely Buffalo's tough. That and is I a think- tough one. That's they probably tough, the one I struggle with the most on this whole list. Yeah, I think they're going to be better than last year. Uh, so yeah, I don't think I don't see them winning that game. I'm gonna I'm gonna say win, just to be different than you, and just to I don't know. Just, I want to start the season off in a positive. I don't want to start on a loss. So I'm gonna say W for week one. Harry says loss. Week two at the Raiders. Win. Win. I have a W for that one as well. That should be a W for Pittsburgh. Week three, the Bungles, 1 p.m. I say win. I have a W for that one as well. Now, here's another interesting one. Green Bay. I said win. Pending, Aaron Rodgers doesn't play for Green Bay this season. You're thinking he doesn't play? Uh, he said he's not going to play. <laughs> From what I've been hearing, he's very adamant he's not playing another game for Green Bay. I agree. I, that makes I think that makes a significant difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think if he plays, I think we'll lose definitely on the road at Green Bay. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll say I'll say win with the with the asterisk on Rodgers. 
I actually have the asterisk on my paper. I have win <laughs> with an asterisk. So you have the same thing. Yeah. Uh, week five versus the Broncos. I think win. They're still figuring out their quarterback situation. Yes. I also have win. Week six versus loss. the Seahawks. That <laughs> was quick. I have yeah, a loss too. Uh, I kind of want to say, I feel like they're going to be competitive. Uh, the Seahawks and Russell struggled a little bit last year. Um, but if I'm going to find a loss in the schedule, I feel like that one. And here's where it gets interesting on my schedule for two. We have the bye week. You said you said loss for Seattle. I did say loss, yeah. So we both had an L for Seattle, and that's Sunday night game. So that should be uh, see though that's a home and Sunday night been like Sunday night. I don't know. I, I I'm going to stick with loss, but I think that's a game they can pull an upset. They could pull up, but Seattle's one of the best teams in the NFC. They are, but I mean, as long as they have Wilson uh, Russell last Wilson, year. yeah, healthy. Uh, I think they're. I think they'll be better than last year after that early exit. We'll see, but I definitely have loss for that right now. Uh, we gate the Browns. The Browns. I have W. You have W. On the road at the Browns. Coming off a bye. I'm going to say a win as well. There we go. My man. I that. think they're going to pull the upset on that game. I do too. And you have to buy the credit before I have them beating yeah, the Browns actually. twice. Huh? I have them beating the Browns twice, by the way. We'll see when we get to there. Okay. <laughs> so uh, Chicago. Chicago is, a, is going to be an interesting team next year. Yep. I struggle with a little bit. I'll let you go ahead and go first. It's at home. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say loss. I have that one as a W. New quarterback. Uh, I'm sure I'll have some growing pains. It's a home game. Monday night football. Ben likes Monday night football. I'm gonna say W for that one. Okay. So you go L. Week 10, Detroit. I think a win. I also Um, have that as a win. Easy dub. Week 11 at Chargers. I say a win. I actually have that one as a loss. So Harry's going to go W. Why do you think that's a win? Chargers weren't very good last year. I don't see them. Or I didn't. I haven't seen anything that makes me think that they're going to be significantly better. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the chances. I agree. I just feel like this is one of those games we have. A, I I at least picked a lot of wins in a row, and I feel that's like how this, I, that's how I felt with Chicago. Yeah, so. this is one of those games. I just feel like the Steelers could win, but they might blow it. Although it is Sunday night, Steelers tend to play better Sunday nights. So. Uh, week 12 at the Bungles. Win. Same. Saw you weirdos on Twitter talking about Steelers aren't better than the Bungles. We're beating them twice. <laughs> Joe Burrow is going to get buried. And here's where I think the season starts getting rough. <laughs> it's not an easy. This is, this is the point where I think it's going to start. Yes. For me. My prediction wise. Now, so. last week I did call the Steelers winning the division, and my schedule reflects that. So we'll see what you have here. I'm guessing we're going to differ a little bit in this last these okay. last couple weeks. <laughs> so, week 13 versus the Ravens. Sunday uh, I'm going to afternoon. Say a, a loss. Harry says loss. I picked a dub for that one. Home game, I'm going to pick. I mean, we usually split the series with the Ravens. I'm going to say that's the dub. Harry goes L. Now, week 14 at the Vikings. I think another loss. 
I got a dub for that one too. Why do you think that's a loss? <laughs> you think that one's a win? I do. At Minnesota, Minnesota's tough. They are. I like Minnesota to win their division. Uh, Dalvin Cook. Yeah, I mean, they're a good team. It is a short week too, which is going to be tough. You come off the Ravens and then you got them on Thursday night. You're going to come off a physical game with your biggest rival. Mm-hmm. The travel halfway across the country, play Minnesota at Minnesota. Yeah, I don't, I don't like, I don't like that. I'm going W just because I think the Steeler team is going to be better than everyone thinks, but that could very well be a loss. I could see that's that's going to be one of your tough games to me. That's like the Chargers game. That could be a one you don't expect. I mean, they're not Vikings aren't great, but a short week at Minnesota that could be a tough one. Tennessee. Loss. I have a dub as well. I, to me, this is a game where those linebackers, mm-hmm. you're going you're gonna to notice it. Trying to tackle Derrick Henry, and I think they're going to have an issue. I don't think – see, here's my reasoning. I don't think Tennessee is going to be quite as good as they were last year. I think they overperformed a little bit. And I think you saw it down the stretch. They started to struggle a bit more. Um, see. I think they're a bit one-dimensional. They have a strong run game. Uh, I don't know. I think, especially the end of the season, I think they have the same problem Pittsburgh has with pass game. Last year we had all pass. We had no run. People figured us out. They're kind of, they have, they're all run. Um, they're not that good down the field. So I think Pittsburgh could take that one. Kansas City, I'm guessing we both have an L for that one. Yes, sir. L at Kansas City. I don't think that needs an explanation. <laughs> <laughs> you could, if, if you're confused about that, uh, send us a message on Twitter <laughs> or Instagram and we'll explain. <laughs> uh, week 17 versus the Browns, Monday night football. And I think for the fifth week in a row, <laughs> the Steelers are going to take an L. Woo! Harry is down. I'm calling dub, Harry. Okay. I haven't beaten the Browns twice, and here's why. One of its pettiness. Browns fans have been talking too much trash. Everyone's counting the Steelers out. So I'm going to go ahead and say right now, they're not beating the Browns, or they're not beating the Steelers this season. Reason two, and I've said this, and this isn't just pettiness, I truly believe that the Browns are not going to be as good as they were last year. We'll see. I think they're going to take a little step back. Not a huge one. They're going to be competitive, but I don't think they're going to be as good as they were last year. So, week 18, the extended week at the Ravens. I'd say win. You split the series. Don't know what the circumstances will be, but I'm going to say you, you pull it off. And I have that one as an L. But, of course, I don't have the Steelers going uh, O and <laughs> uh, what do you have going one and – six in their last six games or one in five. So yeah. I have 13 and four. They win the division. Let's see what Harry's got here. One, okay. two, three, four, nine and eight. You got nine and eight. I mean, that's what you call nine games. I think nine and eight, nine and eight. I call the division. Uh, for me, that could be 12 and 5. I think the Buffalo game for me is the biggest iffy. That Viking game could be iffy too. I don't know. I don't think they're as bad as everyone else does, obviously. I'm just just keeping setting the bar low. I'm not I'm not having high expectations for this coming season. I just see everyone online talking about how bad they're gonna be and about Ben's old and this and that and it perplexes me if you look at the numbers last year he was they had like the 10th ranked offense maybe a lot of that was in the beginning i have just from i have a lasting impression of how bad we were to finish the season and i have the impression of people forget we went 11 and no that's that's where i'm at with no run game being the worst running team in the nfl we won 11 games before we lost the game 
We will see. I don't have a lot of confidence. With the worst season. offensive coordinator in the league. We'll see. We'll see. So there you have it, folks. I have 13 and four. Harry has nine and eight. Harry called nine games. I called the division. Let us know on social media what you have. I'll probably post these brackets. I'll make something up and post them so everyone can see them. And then you can let us know your thoughts as well. So that'll be fun. Oh, by the way, speaking of all you beautiful people, uh, Twitter, you responded well to my post to get 100 followers by football season last week. Man, you guys, we had like eight or six or eight something in like two days from Twitter. Instagram, you guys are lacking. I need you to go follow on, or subscribe on YouTube. We need 100 by football season. We're like at 47. We're close to 50. I need you guys to step up. Man, you guys talk to us a lot. You're interactive. You like everything. I get messages all week from you guys about penguins. But I need you to go subscribe on YouTube. Follow the podcast on Spotify, Apple, Google, whatever your preferred podcast platform. 100 by football season. Let's do it. Let's do it. Do it. Do it. Did we cover football enough? I think so. I think we're good. Okay. Let us know your thoughts on that, everybody. Yeah. Send us your predictions. Who's crazy? Is Harry like a, is he a, a loser for thinking that they're, they're that bad? Or am <laughs> I just a homer and like, uh, giving my my favorite team too much credit for what they deserve so let us know let us know (sighs) ufc 262 was saturday night what you think man it was okay it was a little not the most exciting card not like the last card yep that'd be hard to live up to um yeah first fight and the last fight were the best fights for me same that first fight was pretty brutal. <laughs> I felt every punch in that thing. I think uh, they had, there was two cancellations mm-hmm. uh, fights that I was looking forward to. Leon Edwards and Nate Diaz and the Hermanson fight I w- would have liked to watch. Um, yeah. But, well, that's what it is. Barbosa looked good. That fight was fun. That was a weird KO I hadn't seen before with the delayed. The yeah. <laughs> That's that's kind of scary. Uh, your brain shutting down like that's probably not a good thing. <laughs> yeah, he got hit. He was still up. He was ready to go, and all of a sudden, he's yeah. just his legs went out, and his brain just decided to turn off for a few minutes. Yeah, I've never seen. I've seen some delayed knockouts, but not like that delay. That was pretty interesting. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, that, that that can't be good for your brain. But uh, that was a good fight, man. Uh, they were beating the crap out of each other. Mm-hmm. featherweight might be my favorite division i like featherweight and lightweight the most i think the guys are quick there's usually a lot of stand up you have good grappling there's a lot of skill and sometimes you just get brutal fights how about that next fight harry who was it chukagan ah uh, you paid attention i learned how to say it last night yeah, it's not chuka chuka chin chuka jim chukagan chukagan yep uh, uh, that one surprised me. Honestly, when I watched it, I thought she lost, but it was close. It was close. I wasn't. I thought she lost the first and the second round. Yeah, but. the second round was close. I think if uh, Ara, Ara, now this one, how do you say it? I know they pronounce the J. It was like Arhujo. I think how they say that. Something like that. I think if she didn't look totally gassed in the third, I think because of that, they may have uh, given her less. I don't know. They're not supposed to do this. It's supposed to be scored by points, but I figured she's so gassed that they took points, not take points away from her, but you know what I mean? Yeah. They gave the boost to Chukagian. Yeah, she was, she was out. She was tired. She After that grapple was... in the second round, she couldn't even lift her arms up. Yeah. Like, I don't know what's the point in having those beastly – arms if you can't lift them up <laughs> yeah she was she was done and in the second and the whole third 
Yeah. Yeah, nothing left in the tank. Oh, she can't even throw a shot. That was uh, surprising. But yeah, I think Chikagian after that after that grapple, she looked pretty good. Mm-hmm. Mostly because Arahu Joe couldn't move or however it's known. <laughs> uh, the next fight. What'd you think of that one? It was all right. I think it was the right call. Crowd was booing. I didn't think it was that boring. I thought it was pretty good for two million guys. Montorin, he, mm-hmm. he won. The Brazilian guy. Yeah. They got That's that about one. it. He looked better. Um, he definitely beat the crap out of him. Mm-hmm. Even though Schnell was saying the whole fight he wasn't hurt and he was he didn't seem to be doing enough to me. He was really backing up the whole time. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. This next one breaks my heart a little bit. I'm not surprised. Is T Ferg done? Yeah. He's done. He's there's a significant difference. It was sad to watch. It wasn't even really a fight. There was no point in that fight you thought he had a chance to win. No. It wasn't a very exciting fight. Mm-mm. It was pure domination. Guess... You almost felt bad for him. Yeah. Benio could pretty much do whatever he wanted. Yeah. It's what I expected. I mean, that's what I, I expected before a fight. After seeing Ferguson's last two fights, mm-hmm. the guy just he he's 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 out of it and he's blaming everything but himself. And it shows I, will say, I lost some respect for him after that fight. I don't like the way he handled the loss. He's been doing that. He's done that. He did that against Gaethje as well. He's he's a yeah. sore loser. He is a sore loser. I don't like that at all. Uh, I'm disappointed though because again, Tony Ferguson was like my favorite fighter the past few years. Uh, that's a tough fall off, man. You go from being a monster to the guy a lot of people think can dethrone Khabib, and then <laughs> you just look really bad your past three fights. Yeah, I mean, he, he had a 12 fight win streak and he took a lot of damage, so and I eventually that catches up to you. Next, his, his uh, ankle being pulled out of the socket was. Give him props for hanging in with that one, though. Yeah, he's tough, but he is tough. He barely grimaced. <laughs> he wasn't. He wasn't gonna tap. He doesn't tap. <laughs> no, you can see the pain on his face. I think he's gonna, unless Dana completely refuses, which I don't think he will, because I think uh, there's still a draw for Ferguson. We saw with the crowd last night chanting his name. I don't think he's gonna win, but I think he's gonna attempt he pro- to come back and do another fight. Yeah, they might give him who, another. He, who he can fight at this point. We'll see. Maybe him and Cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, that might be, I, mean, I hate to laugh, but that might be the only fight uh, either of them have left right now. Yeah. One of them's got to win that fight, right? They both can. Yep. <laughs> so, Agreed. Someone will end their streak. Man, unfortunately, we only got a round in a couple seconds of the uh, main event, but it was a great fight until that. It was. It was a fun fight. It was a fun fight. Um, Lots of action straight from the start. At first, I was worried about Chandler uh, because that reach looked really bad for him. And then uh, when he was down in the grapple, I thought that was game over. But man, he did some bouncing. He's strong. He was. He's strong. He's scrappy. He's a bulldog. I think he's got a bright future in the USC and I hope they run this back. Cause I thought if it wasn't for that, I don't want to say lucky punch. Cause it's not luck. Um, he caught him perfectly. If it wasn't it was, for that, that could have went a different way. Yeah, it was, uh, he definitely belongs among mm-hmm. the top lightweights. He should I mean, fight. Very is one of the best grapplers there is. And to see, uh, Chandler hold his own and get in some very bad positions. Uh, where like Gaethje next? I mean, all the announcers thought he was done. Yeah, he was. It was a good fight. Both both of them. Both of them were close to out. Both of them came back in the first round and the second round. He just got caught and finished. I would love to see Gaethje and Chandler. Oh, that'd be a freaking great fight. I think that's the fight you make because you sure. got Poirier and McGregor. Mm-hmm. The winner of that should fight for the title, and then. And yeah, I guess uh yeah, and, and, yeah. Chandler, you win that, you're right back in the mix, right back in the picture. I don't know if you get a I mean, I know that fight was close. I don't think he got dominated, so he definitely could be right back in it. And 
Same I with Gaethje. Yeah, if he wins that, he's probably next. And then Gaethje and then whoever wins that, run it. Hopefully Chandler run it back because that was. I mean, if he didn't catch him on the jaw there, he could have won that fight. He was uh, controlling the first round yeah. after he got up off the grapple. Chandler had more power. You could definitely tell whenever he was hitting him. He did. He, he was, was rocking him. him. And he figured him out too. It was worrisome the beginning of the fight because it didn't look like he could get in his range. He was so much shorter, but he figured it out and he started popping him. So it was good. Yeah, that was a good one. I wish we could have got a full, at least three rounds of that, but what are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. The first and last fight were exciting. Um, what's next? UFC 263 in June. Asanya. Sonya's got to win that, I would think. I don't see him losing two in a row. Leon Edwards, Nate Diaz. Mm, what else looks good there? That's an all right card. Credo and Morena, that was a good fight. That was a draw last time. Oh, was it? Yep. I remember that one. Maya and Bilal Muhammad. That's an interesting, that's an all right one. It's a good card. I like it. Victorian had to sign him. We'll see. Last time they fought, it was close. Yeah. I think it was a split decision. We'll see who got better. I know. I'm looking more forward to, I think, Connor and Poirier. Uh, yeah. See if That's Connor can get a win. Or if he might be done too. We're talking about a Cowboy and Ferguson being washed up. If Connor loses again, he might be fighting Jake Paul next. If Connor loses again. I think he's done. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see him on. Uh, I don't think he his star power is going to take a huge hit. I don't think he'd be worth the payday. I mean, I say that, but then he still brings in these numbers, and all he's done is lose lately. But, I don't think he can survive another loss, though. That, that's a wrap if he loses three in a row. Yeah. I mean, his, his comeback fight, which was uh, – it was Cowboy. Cowboy hasn't won a fight in months, a year, so who knows? We will see. We'll see. Well, that's our show, everybody. Hey, yep. she talk sports uh go pens this week hopefully they pull it off and do something um so hey follow or subscribe on youtube follow the podcast come talk to me on twitter and instagram about the penguins let's see what they do tuesday hopefully they tie it up one one let us know what you think of our predictions for the steelers season tell harry why he's wrong See you next time. See you next time. See you next time.